G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday morning here in Australia, so it's still coming for over in the States. And as I thought, we have had a pullback. I mean, Bitcoin now down you know, nearly to below 60,000. We're only just above it and we've still got tomorrow to come. So we could be facing some more downside. And look, there's been so much sort of bullish news that's been happening for such a long time and no big corrections. I am getting more and more concerned that we are going to see a 2013 style correction. I don't think it's going to be 80%, but I think a good maybe 30 to 40% correction uh, is going to occur before we then make another leg up. Now again, I can't offer you financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. I have no training whatsoever in that. It's just my personal opinion based on time in the markets and that is what I'm concerned about. Now I'm not saying panic, sell everything or anything like that. It really, it's up to you what you're going to do. So for me, you know, you could say I got a bit lucky or I got a little bit smart. I got in after the March crash last year. Uh, and that's where I put a bulk of the money that I've put in. I have still been dollar cost averaging. I haven't really dollar cost averaged for the last sort of couple of weeks a whole lot because I've had other bills that I've had to pay. So for me, even if we do see a you know, 30, 40% correction, I'm gonna lose gains. I'm not really gonna lose any money. It'd have to be one hell of a correction for me to actually lose real money. So for me, I can handle that, I can hold. But for anyone who's in at the moment and who's only maybe been in for the last few weeks to possibly even only a couple of months, so i.e. this year, if you've made some really good gains, you may lose a whole lot if we have that kind of real hefty correction. Now again, I don't want to scare people. I'm not trying to create FUD or anything like that, but that is just what I'm worried about. And we'll have a look at the chart soon and we'll have a look at why I think that. But let's move on. Dominance, I mean, look at that, it's down. Now the market has dropped. This was $2.3 uh, trillion, so now we're $2.2 .2 trillion. Uh, and it has dropped a little bit. But look, there's still been gains, don't get me wrong, some altcoins have done unbelievably well, but overall the market is down and Bitcoin dominance is finally under 50%. So will it hold there for a while? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Will it continue to go down? It may well. I think we're going to have to have a good correction in the market for everything to kind of turn around. And again, just my personal opinion. Uh, for, yeah, for things to kind of change, I think we have a big correction. Bitcoin gets on a run. Everyone panics out of these, uh, you know, altcoins, and they get hit the hardest. Unfortunately, they really will get absolutely smashed. Uh, and you know, maybe Bitcoin goes down to around about sort of forty thousand. Maybe even you know, the scary two hundred day moving average. Now, I think it'd be quite a drop if it got to there. But it's just something you need to keep in mind that that may happen. All right, let's have a look though. Gas price is still a little bit high, but you know, 100 is not as bad as the 300 and 200 that we've seen it before. So ETH dominance, uh, I think that's up just a fraction. That might've been 12, I think it was 11.8. I don't know, I can't remember what it was yesterday now, but I think that might be up just a little bit. All right, what has really pumped though? What's doing really, really well in the top 100? I mean, bounce old, never even heard of the coin, but I mean, look at that. That's what I mean. There's some just real crazy stuff going on. Nano, 143% over the last seven days and 134% of that came in the last 24 hours. This is what worries me. These kind of gains are just too big. Sirecoin, Digibyte, BitTorrent, Decentraland. I mean, all above 15% in 24 hours. Now, 15% is good and these kind of, you know, 20, 30% are good. But these 100% in 24 hours, that's... Yeah, things are getting a little bit loose at the moment, so I'm extremely concerned, and it's why I've taken some profits. And look, if I'm wrong, and the market just to con continues to go up, I took profits. I didn't take losses, so <laughs> I'm not too worried. Yeah, sure, maybe I could have 10x my money because I didn't uh, pick it exactly right. No one can pick it exactly right, except for the you know, the real big players because they have so much money that they can manipulate the market. The rest of us, we're all just playing a guessing game. And look, even the big guys get it wrong sometimes. They don't have enough to control the entire market, just certain sections. You know, if they get into a specific coin and maybe Bitcoin. But look, I mean, the gains, you just have a look at them. They're pretty good gains, particularly over the seven days. I mean, they've just been roaring. But 
let's have a look at the losses because there have been some and some ones that I suspected would uh, happen as well. So Dogecoin, I, kn I knew that was going to come. You can't have that kind of pump. Now, I'm not saying it can't go higher, but geez, I knew there were some people that would get burnt there in 21% and this could come down even more. And if there's a good size correction from Bitcoin, I mean, this will get smashed. It just will, I can guarantee you. Same with Chili's, it's had such a good run. So now it's on the decline. You know, Bitcoin SV, I don't know how it pumped in the first place. Same with Bitcoin Cash. I don't know why that pumped in the first place. I get the feeling like there's a lot of market manipulation going on at the moment and people are, you know, just kind of pumping and dumping coins not completely dumping them but they're pumping them and then quickly taking you know a substantial amount of the cash back that's why you're having you know some of these kind of really big dips but the gains they kind of at least on the surface look like they have uh, far outweighed the losses but they haven't actually the total market cap is down we're only looking at the top 100 i mean you start getting out of the top 100 into all the really weird stuff you're going to see some massive pump and dump so beware and again i just i have the feeling like a big correction is coming soon and big correction is really 20 plus percent it doesn't have to be like 40 50 60 70 80 percent that we've seen in the past particularly 2013 i don't think we're going to have that kind of 70 percent correction but i reckon a good you know 20 to 40 percent correction uh, from Bitcoin, which will be even more volatile than these other coins, I definitely see that coming. But again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. I'm treading carefully in the markets at the moment. All right, so again, let's go to Bitcoin and have a look, and we can see we've just we've had so much trouble getting over this sixty thousand, and we finally did. But it seemed it was a bit of a fake out because look at this, it's come back and it's below this uh, level here, but. 61-ish sort of thousand, 62-ish sort of thousand, you know, thereabouts. Yep, got out and rolled over. Now, does that mean it can't, you know, get up and pump Monday morning? No, of course it could. It absolutely could. But I just think things are so sort of crazy in the altcoin space and that. I think we're kind of burning out at the moment. There's not enough new money coming in to support that. It's just kind of the current money that we have doing some, Again, market manipulation, a, a little bit, not completely, but, you know, some kind of pump and dump sort of stuff going on. But again, look, I, I could be completely wrong. And for me, I'm not panicking. I'm not, you know, basically selling 30, 40% of everything because I don't think we have hit the cycle high at all. But I do think we could absolutely see something like here. We come down and retest this even possibly come down and retest this because this is roughly 32,000 is where the 200 day moving average is at the moment so I could see something like this happen but I just don't think it can quite get there I think the buying pressure would be too much but I do think a good you know getting down into the $40,000 correction for Bitcoin which is going to be brutal on the altcoins is 100% possible and I think it's getting kind of likely at the moment but again I have to say this all the time it's not financial advice you make your own decisions this is just me based on time in the market and again I was lucky I put most of the money that I put in back uh, in March last year so I'm well in profit in everything the market would really have to tank for me to actually lose money but what I could lose is a whole stack of unrealized gains. I think I could lose, you know, at least probably 50% of my portfolio uh, profit if Bitcoin was to dip down into the kind of 30s, uh, even low 40, uh, $50,000 bracket, just because I'm sort of, you know, somewhat heavily invested in altcoins because ETH will be brutal. Don't, don't worry about that. If Bitcoin dips down to 40 or even into the 30s, Ethereum is going to go likely under a thousand dollars. It literally will go that low. But again, we just got to wait and see. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but I am very, very nervous at the moment and very, very cautious. So, um, you know, I've got cash sitting on the side from the profits I've taken, and I'm just not touching it. That cash that I have on the side from taking some profits along the way, and it's not a lot. I'm still, you know, as they say, balls deep in. But that cash sitting on the side is either for something like this where we get a really big correction and Bitcoin's you know, down into the you know, mid to low 40s or even 30s, 
that's where I'll deploy that cash or I'm going to wait for the bottom of the bear market next cycle. That's my plan. If I haven't invested that cash in something else uh, and we're going to talk about that very, very shortly. So that's what I'm thinking for Bitcoin at the moment. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think this is just a kind of blip and we're going to get ready and rock it even higher? Or do you think that maybe the market is a bit overboard at the moment? We can see the volumes fairly low. We haven't seen a lot of volume for quite some time. So it is teetering out. And maybe we need a bit of a sell-off to kind of spark things off again for them to get to some cheap prices where people are like, yep. And again, particularly, I think, around about this kind of $40,000 mark, we can see, look at the volume there. There was a lot of selling, but then there was a lot of buying, particularly over here at the $30,000 mark. So I really do think you'll get some big buying down around this 40 k mark. I mean, like I said, I'll be in. If it gets down to kind of mid to low 40s, I'll be putting a substantial amount of the money that I have on the side in. Not all of it though, just in case it does go down lower. I want to make sure I've always got some cash sitting on the sides to buy more. All right, moving on, a couple of interesting stories. So Ethereum transaction fees surge amid feverish, feverish demand for crypto. And you know, people are getting into the altcoins crazy at the moment. A lot of sort of, like I said, pump and dump sort of stuff. It's not exactly dump, but geez, you know, profits are being taken fairly quickly. Let's put it that way. Now, many thought that the fees would be lower after the Berlin fork, though uh, that is not the case at the moment. Excuse me. Oh, 109. So it's still pretty high. It did get down to like around kind of 70, 80 and that. And we've definitely seen it higher. So maybe they have brought them down, but nowhere near close enough. You know, I mean, look, this is the part that worries me. The average cost of placing a transaction on the Ethereum blockchain hit $24. You want to do any basic smart contract type stuff, it's 24 bucks. So unless the smart contract thing that you're doing, like you know, staking on DeFi or whatever, is bringing in hundreds of dollars every time you do that, you just can't afford to do it. It is not worth it. You've got to be a big time player. And $24 is nothing. If you've got thousands, you know, millions of dollars, sweet, $24 is nothing. For the rest of us, you know, that fee is probably more than what we're trying to claim. You know, I'm such an Ethereum fan and I heavily invested in it. I really hope they can get some of this stuff sorted out sooner rather than later. This is just killing them at the moment. Now, Dogecoin, like we said, you know, it had a great pump. And if you were in over seven days ago, you're still doing all right. Again, we go over here. Let's have a look uh, at the losses. Dogecoin, if you're in over a week ago, you're still well up. But geez, if you got in in the last few days, you've lost 20 something percent straight away. And this could get worse. I'm not saying it will, but I knew this was going to pull back. You know, ladies and gentlemen, anyone watching my channel, we buy when it's red and we sell when it's green. If something's, you know, pumped 30, 40 percent, I'm not saying you can't get lucky, and that's what it will be, lucky and jump on board and then see another 300% growth. You can, but you're more likely to see something like this. We want to buy when it's like this, and we want to sell when it's like this, not the other way around. Don't chase the pumps. If it's already up kind of, you know, 20 30%, you've missed it. Really, you know, yeah. Buy when there's blood in the streets and sell when everyone else is being greedy. That's the way it works. Warren Buffett, one of the smartest investors, I don't know if he came up with that, but he's used it, and that's what you need to do. So this may be a good buying opportunity for Doge. For me, something that's gone up 300% in seven days, 20% retracement's not enough. I'd be looking for it to come down a whole lot more. But that again, that's not to say it can't continue to go up, but the risk-to-reward ratio is just, it's too low at the moment. You're more likely to lose than you are to gain. But... You make your own mind up. All right. Things are looking pretty good with Cardano. I mean, it's been sitting around nearly its old all-time highs, a dollar fifty-ish kind of range. Let's go and have a look, see where we are. All right. What is Cardano at at the moment? Dollar thirty-eight. So it was up around dollar forty-nine. So again, we've had a retracement, and its old all-time high was around about I think a dollar fifty, dollar sixty. But it seems to be sort of holding there at the moment. But we can see a little bit of a downward trend. We'll wait and see. But this is big news and may help pump the coin. 
So a new algorithmic stablecoin called Age USD will be launched on the Cardano blockchain, making it a first for the network. This is where the DeFi and everything's going to start for Cardano. So this could be really, really big. Now, multinational blockchain technology company Emergo initially announced the Age USD stablecoin in January 2021. So not too long ago, but they're still waiting to roll out the smart contract stuff for it. So the firm has since announced a partnership between Ergo Foundation, uh, Emergo, and Charles Hoskins Input Output Global, which is the parent company of IOHK. Now the Age stablecoin will be available on Cardano as soon as smart contract capabilities are launched on the blockchain. And look, there's been a lot of talk about this and it's been coming for such a long time. It's, you know, similar sort of things with Cardano. Yeah, it's got no fees. Gas fees are almost non-existent, but that's because it's got basically nothing on it. <laughs> it is still being bought. So yeah, you know, Cardano can say, you know, super cheap fees and all the rest of blah, blah, blah awesome you've got nothing on it though there's no yeah no smart contracts or nothing that can be used on it at the moment so it's still all a promise the same as ethereum that's the problem with all of these and the same with uh polka dot you know what i mean like polka dot same sort of thing cheap fees but they just don't have much going on there they still you know getting all their parachains and stuff sorted out and that's what you need to remember when we're in the crypto space is we're buying into a promise. There's hardly anything that's a legit working project at the moment. There are some, but they're still upgrading to this and upgrading to that. They're not the complete product. You're almost like a VC. You're an early investor and you're hoping that some of these come true and do well. And again, look, I'm sure this is going to happen and it's going to be great for Cardano when it does. But wow, we've been waiting a long time for it. And so I suppose if we've waited this long, I guess we can wait a little bit longer. But, you know, the price of Cardano is uh, still, you know, pretty good. It's not too far off all-time highs. And I think once they get these uh, smart chains done and we can get DeFi on Cardano and things like that with those low transaction fees that they have, provided it all works out well, I think you're going to see Cardano absolutely rocket. But again, do we get that bigger correction to happen first or does this happen first? And is this then something that pushes the market higher and kind of, you know, prolongs a really big correction? I don't know. Time will tell. Grayscale. Now, again, we spoke about this yesterday or not yesterday. I think it was the day before. The massive BTC price surge and the ongoing institutional adoption could help uh, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust surpassed the largest commodity ETF soon. So it's heading towards that. But this is what it's on track to beat at the moment. So the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is en route to surpass the largest gold tracking ETF in the following few months, suggested Bloomberg senior commodity uh, strategist Mike McGlone. Now this is going to have uh, Peter Schiff in all sorts. I mean, he's still on Twitter and he's saying, oh, because Doge is pumping so much, it's better than Bitcoin. All the people in Bitcoin have got to admit that they, you know, don't have the superior product and all the rest of it. And now I can guarantee you that Doge has had a 20% correction and likely more. He's going to be saying, see, this is why cryptocurrencies are bad because they're pump or dumps and people get burnt and blah, blah, blah. Yet gold hasn't been able to do anything for probably about two years now it's just traveling sideways so it's not like gold's a better investment and i can tell you if you had bitcoin two years ago compared to today you are well in profit if you had dogecoin two years ago compared to today you are well in profit but that's what you have to accept with huge profits is big losses and it's that volatility so very very interesting that you know, it's about to surpass gold. It's getting close. Not the total market cap, just the ETFs that are involved. So, yeah, again, I'm still super bullish on uh, cryptocurrencies, particularly in the longer term. I'm talking the next, you know, 5, 10 to even 20 years. I think, you know, the gains that will be made if people can get into the right projects uh, and, and, you know, preferably at the right time. You know, the bottom of the bear market would be the best time. But look, again, you know, even now, I think if you're in good projects, you get Bitcoin today at 60000 It may dip down to thirty, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 at some stage over the next sort of 18 months to two years. But then in the next, you know, sort of two years following that, once it goes into the next bull market, provided the cycles repeat, and they have been for quite some time, I think 60000 is going to be a blip. 
It's literally going to be a blip. I can't tell you exactly what price I think Bitcoin will be. I can give you a rough estimate and say I think within the next five to ten years it's a half a million dollars at the very least, somewhere thereabouts, and maybe even a million. But that is just personal opinion, nothing else. I could be completely wrong. Maybe 60,000, it's the peak and it's never going to be more than 60,000 for another 10 years. That, that's, you know, plausible. Uh, uh, is it likely? No, I don't think so. But again, you know, time's the only thing that will really tell. No one truly knows what's going to happen. Now, Shark Tank. So Shark Tank's Barbara uh, Kukoran, hopefully I said that wrong, advocates getting rich by investing in real estate, not cryptocurrencies. More millionaires are made through real estate than anything else. Now, we've only just recently had cryptocurrencies kind of come into the space in the last decade or so. So if she doesn't know anything about it, then, yeah. Um, she's not wrong. She's just not exactly right. How about you get into cryptocurrencies and get into real estate? Get into both and make a whole lot of money. Now, again, you still need to understand the crypto space and the cycles of the markets and things like that. And if you can do that, real estate is not... 10, 15xing every four years. Cryptocurrencies are. That's what they're doing. If you get into cryptocurrencies at the bottom of the bear market, and you know it doesn't have to be exactly the day to the hour, just thereabouts, and then simply hold until around about the top of the peak, yeah, I mean, the, the amount of money you can make is unbelievable. Real estate here in Australia, at least, on average, doubles every seven to 15 years. Doubles every seven to 15, and there's fluctuations. There's periods where it'll go down, you know, I won't say dump, but it goes down by a bit. And then there's periods where it goes up, but roughly every seven to 15 years, house prices double in Australia. Now, what we need to remember for my Australian viewers is that Australia is in one of the biggest housing bubbles in the entire uh, world. At what we pay per square metre, rivals just about anything so will this be able to continue in australia i don't know i would think not i think there's probably going to be something that'll happen in the next however many years 10 20 years i don't know what it's going to be that's going to cause house prices to come way way down now i don't mean like 50 percent retracement i mean there might be you know some kind of incident where they drop 50 percent for a very short amount of time but you know we just we pay so much per square meter <coughs> that we are literally one of the most expensive places in the world to buy property. Not quite there. We're not, you know, <laughs> like with, you know, places in Paris and London and all the rest of it, but we're not far off. And considering, you know, the size of our nation is not that big, uh, it is quite expensive. So for me, I, I'm, I plan on making, you know, some good profits in cryptocurrencies and I'm doing that so far. And if I'm lucky and I can, you know, get enough at the right time, then I plan to put that into real estate. And then from there, uh, you know, I've got two streams of revenue. Again, I do plan to get back into stocks at some stage. I just think now is not the, the best time for it. I think there's much better returns to be found elsewhere, but that won't last forever. It is likely cryptocurrencies will have another bear market at some stage. And we might even have a... Like I said, I think a hefty retracement sometime soon. But I think the peak of the cycle is still yet to come. And if you can, you know, get in and get out at good times, uh, then you can make way more money uh, in the kind of mid to short term from cryptocurrencies than you can in the real estate market. But this is very true what she says. So the entrepreneur who turned a thousand dollar loan into a billion dollar real estate empire says she will get rich by investing in real estate and not cryptocurrencies. Look, fair enough, get rich whatever way you want. Now the American investor takes uh, every extra dime she has and puts it in real estate, emphasizing that she will get rich nice and slow this way. And I agree with that. It's almost a guarantee that you're gonna make money from uh, real estate in the long run. Like I said, Australia every you know seven to fifteen years you're going to double your money, and look, no one's throwing shade at that whatsoever. But in cryptocurrencies, and again, it's dangerous though, and we all know that. Anyone who's here, or at least anyone who's coming in, should know that it is dangerous. But you can ten x your money every four years. 
at the rate that Bitcoin's been going. That is coming down slowly but surely. But I mean, you know, at the bottom of the March cycle, I mean, it was 3000 Let's just round up. It was $4,000. You've 10x'd your money and then another sort of half right there. So you've around about 15x'd your money on Bitcoin. And you've done that in a matter of a year. You're not doing that in real estate. You're not 15xing your money. So, you know, I'm not knocking her. That's what she knows. And that's fine. But she is missing out on an opportunity. She straight up is. But again, you have to do some research. Please don't just dive in and go, all right, well, I'm going to jump in now and, you know, 10, 15x my money in a year's time. No. Probably not because we're already at all-time highs for just about everything. You're probably closer to losing a fair bit of money at the moment than you are gaining a whole lot. But no one actually knows. Again, there could be a whole lot left in the market. Maybe Bitcoin gets to 400000 and Ethereum gets to nearly 30000 Who knows? I don't think that's going to happen this cycle. I think in years to come, absolutely those kind of things could happen. But not just yet. And again, Real estate, it is kind of the safest bet and it is a limited supply. We only have so much earth here, you know, so much land here on earth before it all runs out. So if you own some of it, you have a, something that is, you know, truly a scarce sort of uh, asset, I suppose is a good way to call it. But do you, there's some other ways to make some good money as well. All right, last but not least. So again, I mean, Bitcoin's still booming. We're traveling sideways a bit, and I do think we can have a hefty correction. Again, somewhere around sort of 20 to 40% correction. Uh, I think 40% is probably a little bit too much, but possible. I do think that could come soon, but I don't think it means it's the end of the market by any stretch of the imagination. I think it'll be that shakeout or washout that um, Mike Novogratz was talking about and I spoke about yesterday. But let's go here. The Texas-based Block Cap Incorporated revealed uh, the blockchain and mining firm has mined approximately 544 Bitcoins in the first quarter of this year. And it says that that's about $33 million worth of Bitcoin. And it stems from the f firm's fleet of 12,000 mining rigs. So there's still plenty of money to be made. People are still happy to buy Bitcoin. It is definitely teetered off at the moment. I mean, we come over here, we can see... There's no real kind of big purchases. There's, you know, it's kind of evenly weighted. People are selling Bitcoin and buying, you know, fairly evenly at the moment. Now that could lead to a big leg up. It absolutely could. Or maybe it just kind of fizzles out for a while and then it falls over and again has to come down and test some lower levels. You know, 40, you know, maybe around here 46,000, maybe even around here 40,000, maybe even God forbid we got to come down to somewhere around about here for people to get really hungry and start to buy in. Because what will happen is if we do have a big correction, again, let's say it gets down to, you know, here, the $32,000 mark. I mean, people are going to be panicking and, you know, selling everything and, you know, crying and all the rest of it. But if it comes down and bounces off the 200-day moving average and has a fairly quickly, you know, rise back up into sort of these kind of regions, that is going to be super bullish. The downside part is going to be no good. But if it bounces really hard and pushes up really fast, it's going to show that basically, you know, the 32,000, that, that would be the bottom, wherever it bounces from. It may not be 32,000. It could be, you know, it could be lower. Look, I don't think it will be. I think that if it gets down to the 200-day moving average, people will just be buying the backside out of it. But really, let's say it uh, comes down and gets to about $43,000, but then pushes up really hard and gets back up to around this kind of 60K mark very, very quickly that's going to show you where the real support is and that we still have so much more upside. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another, watch out. The weekend you know, is not over yet. There could be some more re uh, retracement before we have a move to the upside and I'll see you next time.